we Gucci now? I think we are. We're oh, yeah. 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 Finally. Technology is a beautiful thing. When it works. It really yes. is. Thanks for your patience, guys. So we would like to welcome you officially to our week two, right? Of yeah. our girl talk, real talk. Table talk with the girls. Yes. And today we finally have our friend Mickey Ooh. joining yes. us. I'm here. I was having FOMO last week. <laughs> now you're not. No, I am here and I'm going to bring <laughs> my energy. Oh, good. good. <laughs> good. Okay, cheers to that. Cheers. And Sally, cheers, how was your cheers, week? Cheers. Amazing. I loved last week's show. I really connected with a lot of people. And I think that it's really helping us, you know, just show people how to be a girl's girl, right? And Chicks in Confidence comes to you with the second episode. And today, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about commitment. Mm. Norris, mm. how are you doing? I'm doing amazing, actually. I'm loving the setup here. I think that we have many talents. And one of um, <laughs> Salvi's talents is definitely decoration. but um, Which is not mine. Not mine either. <laughs> but you do have a way of yeah. connecting through fashion and mm. like design things. Like you've learned. Listen, Pinterest is a beautiful, beautiful thing, guys. I but love see, I look at Pinterest and I, and I don't find sense in a lot of the things that I, I think it's, it just brightens up anyone's mood to see fresh, fresh flowers, pineapple, and all that good stuff. All I know is that when she sent us this little video last night, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to look cute tomorrow because that <laughs> you the see, table cannot look cute to me. So that's the point. We want to be committed <laughs> exactly. to this real stuff, but we also want to show up just as we are and actually enjoy it and showcase yeah. it. And not every I week like we're gonna that. have a tea party, no, you know? No, we're like, come as you are. And just but enjoy yeah. and be present. I think Sally does like tea, so one of the I things do. that I think would go with her is that. Yes. Well, I love. Co I'm a coffee snob. I love tea, but tea for me is comfort when it's cold. And Norris and Mickey and I learned to embrace tea when we went through the two B mindset transition. Mm -hmm. So excuse me. Oh, it's Norris and I. Norris and I. She Hello, do not tea. throw me under the tea bus. So I if, don't you like try, if you try this tea, Mickey, you're going to love it. It's so, so cool. Melissa, how are you doing? I'm great. If you try this tea, you're going to really love it. <laughs> Talk <laughs> to me about your week. Because I think week after was last amazing. week's session, you oh my God. were it was incredible. I seriously, after I left here on Tuesday, I received so many messages from you guys. Thank you. Sometimes we think we do this for others and we really are filling our cup. I think the so. Absolutely. Time. I was a little nervous last week to be raw and honest and vulnerable and um, the messages that I heard from you guys actually pushes me to be a little bit more raw, more honest <laughs> Which and Which brings vulnerable. me to the thing where we would love for you to interact with us while you watch us. Yes. If anything comes to mind, any questions, any comments, feedback, feel free to put them in the comment section below. We will be happy to answer your questions. Remember at the five minute mark. I'm the teacher, so I'm keeping time. <laughs> I will stop us all, and we will be answering your questions. <laughs> we have a time capsule now. Oh, I just saw that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. teacher's on point. That she is that, not that playing. Like yeah. yeah. She's, She's not playing. playing. Is that playing? Is that playing? Saudi I gets it. inspired oh, on these fine. kind of things. So I must say that yeah. when we came up with this week's topic, commitment came up, and just the idea of the definition of commitment and how it changes over time. So I would like to start off our conversation today with asking every one of you a question. And that question is, what were you committed to 10 years ago? Hmm. Like, what were you fully, like, and we understand that commitment is something that you give your word to, you show up to, that you are showing up no matter what. Like that is your no matter what. So 10 years ago, where were you, Mickey? And what was your no matter what? What did it look like? 10 years ago, what year are we in? <laughs> we're in 2019 now, so hold on. <laughs> Bam, 2009, okay. So in 2009, what was I committed to? Yeah. I was all in on my fitness, like, all in, like I was a badass Mickey in 2009 with my fitness. So what does that look like for you? What did it look like for me? Well, first of all, the reason why I was so hardcore and so committed is that for 17 years, I lost myself. For 17 years, I mean, I've been working out since I was 18, 
and but I was in a toxic relationship for close to 17 years and I stopped taking care of Mickey and I lost myself along the way. I had put on like 60 pounds and I was, I felt like I was trapped. You guys ever feel that way? Like you're trapped inside of your own body and I wanted to come out and play. Like, like that movie, remember that movie? Warriors, so, come out and play! <laughs> and and that's did, how I felt. And what did you do to come out and play? Oh, I dumped my husband. <laughs> She came out and played. I dumped it like a bad habit. Bam! Because he was very toxic. Okay. And it wasn't good for me. Ouch. And so that is why then I went in hardcore my fitness because I stopped taking care of myself. So now I wanted to, I started loving myself again because I had stopped. So 10 years ago, you started to commit yourself again to yes. loving you. Yes. Because 17 years ago, you were in another place. Yes. I, okay. Sally, how about you 10 years ago? What were you committed to? I, the truth is nothing. I wasn't committed to anything. And you know, I, what I did realize is that that's where all my hardships stem from. I realized that my lack of commitment, and guys, I'm not fully committed to this day. Like I struggle with that, but I'm aware of it. And when you're aware of your, of your flaws, you tend to, you know, catch yourself when you're falling into that trap. That's funny that you say you're not committed because looking from an outside in, mm -hmm. I would say you are committed. So why are you saying, like, who was Sally 10 years ago? So 10 years ago, I lacked commitment. And to who? To everything, to my marriage, to myself. Um, one of the biggest things that I was able to pinpoint as of, because it was also my transition time, 2009 is where I started to transition. Jeremy was about to be two in 2009, and I was starting to find myself again, but it was a process. It was like a three-year process. But most importantly, I made this connection. I made this connection that my lack of commitment was what got me in, an, in a domestic abusive relationship. It's what made me be a stop and go. It's what made me fail at every single diet I would try. And because I was processing all this, it made it easier for me to be able to transition in 2010, 2011. Very interesting. So it's a work in progress. <laughs> We're all That's something progress. you learn something new every single day from mm -hmm. someone. Because if you ask me, oh, Saudi, she's committed. But, I but as it. we get into this, you guys I'm are going to understand mm -hmm. that to me, owning that has been my solution. Mm. Had I not owned, like, I don't got it. I, I don't got it. And I think that's why I just throw myself and, and I figure it out whether I'm going to fail or not. Like, you know, right now we're like doing all these new things. It's the new year. We have all these goals. We have all these dreams. We have all these visions. If I start saying I'm 100% committed, the moment I fail at something or the moment I fall back or I fall short, I'm going to beat myself up about it. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that. It's, it's gonna be hard and that it's gonna require work. Like you see this guys, there's, a, there's always a reason behind this. Like this setup, this, the blue, the flowers, the tea set, it's all part of my commitment to myself to want to show up. Like it's not natural for me to want to do a show on Tuesday. Like I could be waking up late, you know, and just hanging around my PJs today. Gotcha. But I committed. I like it. <laughs> we're going to get deeper into that because as we unravel our commitments to ourselves, we're starting off like, I don't know if you guys have seen this whole viral thing that the 10 year challenge, right? Yeah, we're doing it real um, raw right we're now. We're doing it real and we're doing it raw. We should have hashtag 10 years So, <laughs> Norris, what, what, what were you committed to 10 years ago? Well, I think I am the baby from the group. Oh. Every week, every we week, we have to date ourselves. <laughs> and then, I, yeah. I, I have to date. I love, I love dating myself. I'm the oldest. Thank I don't you. mind. Listen, and thank God Nikki's here because I'm no longer the oldest. <laughs> so wait, am I like the middle child? Or you are older than me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know I'm older than you. You are so always older than me because you're the middle child. <laughs> the middle child syndrome. Okay, here. okay, settle down, lady. <laughs> so, um, I'm the baby of the group. Back in 2009, I had recently. Adeline was a year old. I had Adeline in 2008 and recently married. I got pregnant six months after getting married. So for me, 2009 was just Nora settling into her new role as wife, mom. At that time, I was working a full-time position. Um, 
I believe you guys were still in Florida. I was committed to my commitments, but leaving Nora's kind of on the side. I literally removed myself from the list of things to do. So I think because I know you, you were committed <laughs> to your responsibilities yes. as a wife, mom. as a mom, as the head of a, a department. Of a I department. was boss lady. I was um, a type personality. If I had to put in a hundred hours at work, I would get home and I would just work mm -hmm. because my name was everything. If I signed it, you better believe that my T's were crossed, my I's were dotted. As far as my family, I've always been that woman. Like if I have to like put on a bun and just be there and present, do. drop everything and do, mm -hmm. that was me back then. Um, but I was also kind of adapting to giving my all to everyone else. And in the midst of it, looking now, I lost, now yet. I lost myself in the shuffle because I was too committed to everyone else. Mm. I think I could piggyback off of that because when I think of my life, 20, 2009 to mm -hmm. now, 10 years ago, I was truly committed to just living every single day and just whatever, like whatever. And a lot of my lack of commitment to doing anything other than just living was, if I think of it, I think I was so committed to like pleasing others mm -hmm. that I forgot and put my own needs to the side because maybe I was afraid of what other people would think if I changed my commitment. So I always struggled with that and I still till today I have to constantly remind myself that I have to stop like pleasing other people and even to the point where I look at this question and I have to ask it to them but I have to also ask it myself. like. What was I committed to last in the 10 years ago? I was committed to just getting by in life. Getting by. And that left, I'll tell you later. Mm. <laughs> and as luck would have it, they've already answered everything that I was going to say. Because, <laughs> uh, well, not they really, um, Saudi and Norris and some of what we really said. I was super non-committed. I think the only commitment I really had was to my children. And when I'm going to say that, I'm going to sound probably like a horrible wife, but my husband's super righteous. He's a man that if he says, I am going to walk a dog at 6 in the morning every single day, he's going to be fucking outside. Sorry, guys. At 558. <laughs> Hashtag walking. real talk. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag we curse. Um, <laughs> I curse. Um, you know, and... And that to me, from the outside in, you would probably would never notice, but we had a huge problem because he couldn't understand why he came from a very broken home and he took from his parents, well, from his mother. He followed all of her good and he couldn't understand that why I came from a broken home and I didn't take the good. And it was very hard, super hard for me to say, I'm going to start this journey of whatever. Not even about working out, not even about eating anything. Even about praying a freaking rosary. By day four, my commitment was gone. And that's... So you were truly committed to not being committed? <laughs> to, to nothing. <laughs> to nothing. Well, like the wow. only thing that you can that's say that I that's what would never connect. fail was my children. Like I was... And, and it makes it so hard to talk because my son's up. You need to get off now. So, <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> but it's the truth. But then that, that just shows growth, right? When you look yeah. back at your life and you can say, okay, so 10 years pass and you know that time isn't passing in vain. Mm -hmm. Something is happening, whether it's good, whether it's not. Because some of us can reflect and look back at 10 years and be like, more could have happened. Mm -hmm. But then we could also say, well, let's look at what has happened. And where am I now? Like 10 years past, fast forward to today, and how has our commitment shifted? How has how have we changed the, what we're focused on now? Um, <laughs> so Mickey, if we go back to you, right? Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, you were committed to finding yourself and committed to loving yourself deeply because you loved yourself in the shop. Of course. 10 years past, what are you committed to now? Well, I'm still committed to loving myself. That, nice, that is we no, love that. Yes, I'm still committed to loving myself. Um, but now my commitment for my own health and fitness journey is no longer just about Mickey. Because before it was just hashtag all about Mickey. 
It wasn't about me helping anyone. I was I had no desire to help anyone fulfill their mission, fulfill their purpose. It wasn't about that. But it was more about making it was ego. about yeah, it was about yeah, it was about my ego. Um, until, you know, I I had a moment in my life where I had to drop down to my knees. And, you know, I was in such there I was again in another toxic relationship, but this time it was with Citibank. It wasn't with my husband, because I already had dumped his ass. It was with Citibank, you know? And I was in a toxic, it was a toxic environment. And I found myself in the bathroom on a Friday night, eight o'clock, on my knees, crying my heart out. And I looked up and I'm like, really dude? Oh, dude is JC, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, this is it? This is what you created me for, for this? to work for the devil, because the devil was Citibank. I swear it was. <laughs> it was, because I Everybody was Everybody that works at a bank says the same thing. <laughs> why? Like, what's that? Why? Why, why does everybody who work in a bank Why did you thing? call it the devil? Because because there was no balance in my life. Mm. I had no balance. Everything was Your just about was my schedule, everything. Like I worked literally 80 hours plus. And so when people would tell me, oh, you got banker's hours? I'm like, you want to see the finger? There's no such thing as banker's hours. Uh, not for you, at Not least. for me. Like, I had no life. Wow. You but know, you were at, a, an, at an administrative level. Yes. Like, that doesn't really happen to tellers, right? Well, lately, I heard it's really bad now. I don't know. But when I was back there, it was miserable for everyone. But as a vice president leading one of the top branches in New York City, it was hard as hell. Okay. It was because... You know, the company started cutting down on um, employees, and then I had to, I, not only had to do my job, but I had to do everybody else's job. So now you realize that you're at a place where you're no longer filling Mickey's self love cup. You feel like you're stuck in this other place. Yes. And who are you now? Like, what is Mickey committed to now? So now what I'm committed to is I'm on a mission, seriously, because, you know, I, I was pulled out of that environment. And it's for now through my story, sharing my story, sharing my journey, that I'm on a mission to help other women and men that were stuck with me, that are, that are probably right now in the bathroom crying their heart out. And I'm here to tell you there's a way out. Mm. But it takes commitment. But it takes commitment. Yeah. It ain't easy. Wow. Key I like word. that. Wow. I like that. Yeah. And let's go back to you now, um, Saudi. Yeah. Ten years ago. Cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers to that. Okay. You were lacking commitment in many areas of your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fast forward to, to 2019. So the sweet spot for me was during 2011 to now. And that's when I found my commitment to my health and wellness. And that spilled over to my entire life. And... But for me, it wasn't the health and wellness that was my driving force. So at that time, I shared last week, my husband and I, we were about to lose our home and we found ourselves with our back against the wall. And so because this health and wellness company that we are a part of, that we're blessed to be a part of, had a business tied to it, I realized that I'm very business driven. I've always had incredible work ethic. And as I was going through my transition, one of my other strengths was that I'm a hard worker and I worked from the age of 14. So I pulled from that strength mm -hmm. to help me marry where I lacked in commitment to my health and wellness. And because of that, you know, today, that's what I use to push me. It's, it completely puts me out of my comfort zone. It's not in my DNA. And every day I just get more and more committed to my own health and wellness through this mm -hmm. sisterhood, through this community, through this friendships. I don't have it figured out. I don't, I am not perfect. I am so far from it. But you're willing to go through the process oh, along others in order to find that. Absolutely. I, I don't lie when I say that, and I always remember when Mickey put me out of my comfort zone and made me host a, a team call for like a whole bunch of people that I didn't even know. And I said, I would do what we do for free. And what do we do? We're on social media every day sharing our truth, sharing our, our, our day. And every day I don't show up. I don't show up every day. Let me ask you something. What was your turning point? Like, what was your point of no return? So, from taking, looking back at Saudi, the one that had a lack of commitment, and now the one who uses her need for mm -hmm. health and wellness, what was the shift that had to happen in your life in order for you to commit? Honest, honestly, like, I realized that being committed to my bullshit 
it wasn't gonna get me anywhere. It wasn't gonna fulfill me, it wasn't gonna help me grow, and I was gonna stay stuck, and I needed to do something that was gonna get my family out of the financial situation that I put them in. And I made the connection, because I, I, I saw that I was growing, I saw that, as, that I felt happy when I did work out and when I did do what I had to do for myself, for my body. When I nourished my body, I was a good person, I was a good human. And so, when all that is, is being done, when I do that, when I practice that, I'm committed to the things that I need to do to, to be there for my family, to be there for you guys, for my friends, for the team, for everything. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Norris, I'll ask you the same, <laughs> since you guys already got catch the whole way we're going through this, right? Okay. 10 years ago, to so now, oh where are you, what are you committed to right now? Honestly, selfishly, loving me, for mm -hmm. me, with all of my flaws. I think I had to come to Norris. And that's why I think that I am so connected to the mirror, not because I'm like, whoa, Norris, you're gorgeous. But I do believe that the you mirror, are. thank you. <laughs> but the mirror to me was what made me turn the page. All of my life, I dealt with insecurities, low self-esteem. I did excel in my career. I was an A-type since young, very mature. I did things by the book. I literally had my life planned out. I got married a year later than my goals. I wanted to get married by 25, have my first child by 30. I kind of flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> we got married six months after I got pregnant, and I was very on point with everything else. But in the middle of all of that, in the chaos of life, I lost focus of Norris and her needs and what she needed to be for mm -hmm. herself. And I think it changed for me when I became a mom and a wife, because I no longer just needed to deal with me. And I myself is a lot to handle. I'm a very difficult human to understand. I admit it, I can be stubborn, I can be my worst enemy. And I was my worst enemy all of my life. Sorry, I just have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is, she ain't lying, she ain't lying. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like,
at the age of 17, like I mentioned before, I had to drop out. I had to now focus on, I really never had time for Melissa. It was always time for, so I had my son, you know, then things happened in life, people got sick, taken care of, and then I realized um, at some point in my life that I needed to start taking care of me, that I wasn't feeling good, that I have chronic anemia, and eating bad, and not taking care of myself, and not doing the right things, were not making me, were not helping me be the mother, the wife, the daughter, mm -hmm. the friend that I needed to be. So I am committed to me. I and really love what we just kind of shared comes into the whole idea. Notice how before we, well, I'm gonna like quickly briefly just say that I was really committed to living life by default. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to today, I'm committed to recognizing my failures, my faults, and where there is areas for growth. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think it only comes as a result of recognizing your lack and being aware of more. Mm -hmm. um, if I go back to a place in my life where I can pinpoint that, I'm walking down the hallway of the third floor in the middle school I taught, and it was the end of the year, everybody's wrapping up their classrooms, and this teacher who had taught American history for 35 years was pulling down her posters. And I remember walking past the door and seeing the paint, the original paint <laughs> of that wall 35 years ago and thinking to myself, wow, that's it. This is me. 35 years down the line, this is going to be me. Mm -hmm. Walking in and out of this building, teaching in every day, leaving out every, week, every summer, and doing it over and over again. For 35 years. For 35 years, and feeling empty inside, and then questioning, why? Wow, that's powerful. Like, why? There has to be more. And then when I asked myself that question, I had to like recognize that I didn't love myself. I had to recognize that I wasn't committed, and I don't know why I really devoted you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> real talk. <laughs> we yeah, hot mess. You were very courageous to see that. You know how many people, yeah. so I could connect with that because I worked for the school board for so many years. And, and that I was also career. saw, yeah, yeah, I saw teachers do that. I, and it's what I, I wanted to do all my life. Yeah. But I, I recognized at that point that that wasn't going to fulfill me any mm -hmm. longer. That it wasn't going to yeah. fill my cup. Yeah, because you see how you're wow. crying right now? That's how I was, with all kidding aside. And I was being a little funny earlier. But when I got on my knees on the in the bathroom that Friday night, that was a defining moment for mm -hmm. me. Because I was a total hot mess. Like, I cried my heart out because from a young age, like, I always knew I was created for more. Like, I knew that God created me for a specific purpose, for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I knew being trapped inside the bank, that was never gonna happen. And to know that, like literally like a week later, crazy thing, I, I just need to share this real quickly um, before we run out of time, but I had one of my clients who came up to me um, and said to me, she says, you know, Mickey, you're a great manager, you do great here, but this is not your calling. I will never forget that, guys. And that's why, you know, it's so important to really open up your heart and listen to what other people are telling you, mm -hmm. because that day she truly planted a seed. We have a question. Yeah. Um, Tiffany Cortez asked, what have you all done to get yourselves out of depression and into these amazing, well put together women that you want to know? Well put. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Well, um, who wants to answer that? Perception is real. Depression is um, a word that it is a real thing. It exists. But it is also used as an escape to not face your own bullshit. Mm. I remember mm. telling myself I was depressed and therefore I had to eat. I remember telling myself I was depressed and avoided social situations. Well, we tell ourselves we believe. And I remember having to knock myself out of my own thoughts. And I had to do that and recognize, become aware of what was causing me to feel depressed. My inability to face my reality made me depressed. So I had to seek things mm. that helped me face my reality with ease. Not overwhelming myself because I'm good at that. I had to take it one step at a time and break it apart and break it apart. It's peeling that onion layer by layer but being truthful to yourself. And I find that depression 
I respect it. I believe that it is the true. Sun. There's medical diagnosis. I am not saying the contrary. But there's a different depression that a lot of people just use very free. free. Mm -hmm. As a label. To and it's a label alone. to kind of Excuse. cover up mm -hmm. for everything else that's happening. There's a lot of underlayers that need to be touched upon. And I find that we've believed so many lies yeah. that we create a story and we live in it for too long and we need to snap out of it. How do you snap out of it? Surrounding yourself with people that are gonna pull you out and are going to yep. recognize that yes, we're all a work in progress, but allow you to be yourself in the transformation period. And, and seek and to respect like, commitment. Respect and seek commitment because if you're if you're if in a depressive state, we all go through. You know, some, like you said, more severely than others. Mm -hmm. and number one is go see a therapist. Yes. Because I've Take been to help. I've been to therapists exactly. for family exactly. counseling for you know and, and you need counseling. Yeah, it's very recommended. I I admit I yeah. needed to see. I actually saw a psychiatrist and I didn't like her recommendation, so I went to a physical Christian therapist. Yeah. And I stood it there for two years. One hundred percent. Because it's going to help you see things that you may not see, but most importantly, be willing to commit. To, your, to, to yourself every day and find ways to keep yourself committed like I have. So the next question, and like and we're have, ready to answer for five minutes so we went ahead awesome. of ourselves. Awesome. So Sandra wants to know, I think I should answer this one since we talked about it before. Um, when you get into the funk, what do you do to bring yourself back to you? So I, like I was saying to the girls this morning, do you meditate? I don't meditate, it's not in my, in my um, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It actually I do, I did meditate when I needed it. You know what, I actually I did. imagine you meditate. Yeah, <laughs> I used to do, so you just brought me back to a place. So before, like, so like I said, my issue was. They always say you don't know somebody right? 100% because I yeah. was learning this for the first time. I used to do like, it, I don't know if it was meditation, but it was like a hypnosis to get myself in the right state of mind because for me to commit to a workout and to eating healthy back in 2010 was hard. So there were apps and stuff, you know, I was, uh, again, I was exposed to a, a world and a community that I knew nothing of who was recommending all these things. They were recommending self-help and so within that self-help and that self-growth, I found an app that helped me understand and, and this whole health and wellness thing and it was a meditation app. But I don't do that anymore because I have found other ways. So I have a feel a feel good file. And luckily we've done a couple of calls on this. And by the topic. way, you all need a feel good file. Yes. And I go to this feel good file and I think the ladies you, you guys all do this, right? Yes. Where you, you know what to do. When I'm gravitating at a low level, I start and I know when it's coming. It's usually if I don't leave the house for a day or if the kids are annoying me or the husband, I don't know, whatever. I already know what the triggers are. If I didn't do my workout and I said I was or if I didn't eat right, as I feel it coming, I disconnect and I unplug and I either get a massage or I go shopping for soap or I redo my whole bathroom or I paint a wall. Like I just do things like I'll do this tea party thing. Yeah. Um, so I tap into my hobbies. When you guys see me go food shopping and I buy flowers and things, it, that, bring things that bring me joy. And that's something that a lot of us need to recognize, like what brings you joy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like to me, decorating frustrates me. So to me, that wouldn't bring me yeah. joy, but right. I find joy in my children. I find joy in baking. I find joy in music. Like music brings me joy and gets me out of my funk. What do you do? Quick, rapid fire. To bring, to bring me joy? Like get you a good file. Um, aside from working out, traveling, <laughs> the spa, yeah. you know, um, going out to a um, dinner with, fr like here, this brings me joy. Because here we are Get sharing. You out of your funk. Yeah, it's just I feel this is therapy for me. Norris, surrounding myself with family, I think I need I need a lot of laughter, so I need to make myself laugh. Music, makeup, a good perfume, and a nice shower, and dressing up even if I don't want to. I find that a woman that showers, puts lotion on, fixes her hair, it's does true. some eyeliner, automatically your posture changes. It's true, oh my god, you right. have to me a bañar. And I always used to use that on a nurse because she had dealt with this old lady syndrome in Connecticut. And, <laughs> and I would tell her, but oh, that's for another like, show. Yeah, shake that's up. another topic. We're it's just, important. Also, you know what, too? Like, if I go buy like a new dope, it lipstick, helps. Like, I call Try it the, like, the bag. It's true. When I, go I have my lipstick. Ruby Woo is the red. And flat out bag. What's your file? Happy file. It's a lot of what Mickey said is planning outings with my girls, um, with my family.
you that's when you guys will forever see me doing date things. nights and love yes. date, nights. date nights especially um yeah, just yeah. making plans and sometimes you know it's funny mickey and i were having this conversation in the car on su saturday um when i feel this low like i have to tune into music I have to tune in, and not just any music, because not yeah, just everything does to me. Right. Like, Mickey took me to a concert this Saturday, and Lauren Daigle, she does it for me. She gets me out of this funk. So you got to connect with something that you are passionate you about, yes, and shakes you out, exactly. Okay. okay, so this question is different for all of us, and so I, so, okay. Have you ladies found that your faith in God has increased because you took the leap of faith to quit your jobs? And then, hold on, I ask this because this is a business that is based on faith, so there has to be a big, there has to be a bigger power that is strengthening. Before she goes off on a rant, I will say. Uh, she's still praying. <laughs> so, I... I'm not as religious like, oh, sure, right there. as the girls are, but I believe in God, and I believe, I mean, I went to Catholic school for all sake. I don't question my relationship with God. My relationship with God is a personal relationship that I have every single day when I wake up in private, mm -hmm. and, and they respect that, and they love that, and they don't question it. Well, that Although, makes us our friends. Like, we exactly. have to respect each other yeah, right. and not put oh, yeah. or... Thing, yeah. like your theories but I'm, I'm very like I, I love you I believe, just I guess it my belief is I'm a good human and yes being a good human has helped me you know see my worth and wake up that, that day that I woke up and, and decided to quit my job it did require me to believe 100% I see you through God's you know? eyes I know you do I know. listen I, I, that, that's and tell them why you love me so much we are committed yeah. Tell me why. Talk. Tell, tell me why you love me so much. Because of you. You're real. You're you. You love everybody. You love. Okay. Jesus. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why she really loves. Oh me. wait. I know why. Yeah. I know why. Hold because that, she. I'm gonna help you. Because she this. loves Jesus and curses a little. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to go back and comment back yes. on that. But I have to say that having these open conversations <laughs> bring out the best in us, bring out feelings that yes. need to be healed, Ooh. and also bring out thoughts that we hope you are also taking on and having them amongst yourselves. Um, pick up the phone and call a friend. Pick up the phone and chat with mm -hmm. someone about what your commitment was 10 years ago and what does your commitment look like, like today. today. If you don't like the shift or changes that have happened in that gap, there's time for you to make a change. You, need you to don't, make you're not a tree. You don't have to stay grounded where you were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You have the will, the free will mm -hmm. to decide today to shift your focus and change your commitments. Absolutely. And with feel that, free, feel free to share the video with any of your friends, tag a friend below, use our hashtag, and continue to support us. We'll be here next yes. Tuesday at the same time. Love you guys. And, and share with you. us what you're committed to today that yes. you were yes. 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I want to hear from you guys as well. Love you all. Bye. And thank you guys. Bye. Bye.